In this tutorial, we're going to assemble the project you can see on screen from a website called designandmake.com. The website itself offers individual pieces and theme collections of clip art, all professionally created and available for purchase. In this example, we're going to show you how you can access and navigate the Design and Make website, and then we're going to show you what's included in a downloaded project, and then go ahead and put together one of the suggested assemblies from the project sheet. So, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to navigate to the Design and Make website. So I'm just going to pull up my web browser and in the URL bar I'm just going to type www.designandmake.com and then press enter. And this will bring up the Design and Make website. Now there's various things that you can find out on here. You can find out software, you can find out different hardware things, how to make your own CNC machine. And then we've also got the clip art that's available. So we've got the individual models and the projects. And in this tutorial, we're going to be using one of the projects from Design and Make. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the project section and then click here to browse the project catalog. Like so. And this is where you'll find all the projects for Design and Make. And from here, you can browse all the different categories that we have of all the different projects that Design and Make actually offer and you'll see the different collections that we do offer as we scroll down the website. Now the project that we're going to be using is actually part of the food and drink category so I'm just going to go in here and, and to view all the projects from within food and drink and the one that we're actually going to be utilizing today is the wine bar number one. Now you will notice that this is available for purchase at the moment for $36 but we have given to this to you absolutely free and you will find this within your tutorials files that you've installed on your machine. So let's click through onto the wine bar project and this will load up the individual projects page and the first thing that we'll see is uh, one of the assemblies that have been created and all the individual models that are available within the project itself. Now we can click on each of these thumbnails to get a much closer look at the detailed images of the clip art. And if we scroll down, we see another assembly. And this is the one that we're going to be creating. And then you'll get a nice few paragraphs, food for thought, uh, for inspiration on your creations. Now, if we just scroll down a little bit more to the right, you'll see this is the project sheet that you'll get when purchasing one of the projects. And this will list all the individual models available within this project and also give you a few possible combinations to inspire your design. So let's just come out of this and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the software and show you how we can then go ahead and install that into the software itself. So I'm just going to bring up a new copy of the software and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to make this with a width of 24 inches and I'm going to make a width a height sorry, of 12 inches, a thickness of 1 inch, I'm going to work in inches, I'm going to set the Z0 position of the material surface, I'm going to set the XY datum position in the center as that always helps when positioning our models and then we're going to select a modeling resolution of very high. Now I'm just going to press OK once I've done that and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import the clip art from the free project from the tutorials files folder into the software. Now, normally when we purchase a project from Design and Make, it comes with an installer, and that installer will automatically put that into the clip art tab for you. So if you just go over to the clip art tab, I'll show you what this would normally be like. So any any project that's purchased from the website would come underneath the Design and Make folder, and then you'll find that the wine bar will be underneath here or any projects that you purchase will be underneath that design and make folder there. Now for us we're going to have to add this manually. So how we do this is we simply click on add folder and then all we do is we navigate to our tutorials public documents folder. So we go to public documents, Vectric files, tutorials and you select your software, CNC mini project if we just click on there you'll see that we have the wine bar number one and all we do then is simply click on OK and that will add that then to our library browser and you'll then see when you click on the wine bar number one you'll see that we have the six models within that folder. Now if we open up that directory uh, in the public documents and the tutorials folders you'll find also that project sheet 
that will give us some inspiration on our assembly. So if I just get that up, so if you remember this is the project sheet that's available for the wine bar. And obviously it shows us all the single items together like that and then it also gives us some inspiration on how we may want to assemble these. Now what we're going to attempt today is to create this assembly here. So keeping this in mind we can try and follow this diagram as best as we can. And I'll be showing you all the techniques that we can use to make sure that the models like the wine bottle and the wine glasses all appear above what would be the barrel top and the uh, the engraving plaque number one. And we can keep referring back to this project sheet as we go along. So I'm just going to minimize that. And the first thing that I'm going to import is our wine bottle. Now I know that may not seem the most logical as the barrel top is in the background, but I'm going to do this on purpose just to show you some of the things that we need to be aware of when we're importing different models and what it may look like to us in the 2D and 3D view. So I'm just going to double click on the wine bottle number one and that's going to then import that into the center of our work area. And from this stage it may benefit us to actually view the 2D view and the 3D view at the same time. So I'm just going to go up here to tile our windows horizontally. That way we get the 2D view and the 3D view. And you'll notice that our wine bottle at the moment is in transform mode. Now how we know that is because we do have these nodes which will enable us to resize and rotate the object uh, whilst it's in this mode. And you'll see that we get a 2D grayscale representation of the 3D object in the 2D view whilst we get the 3D object in the 3D view. So the next item I'm going to add into our work area is going to be our barrel top. So what I'm going to do again, I'm just going to double click on that. That's going to then import that into the center of our work area. And this time I'm going to resize this object. Now there's quite a few ways that we can do this. We can do this using the transform shortcuts. We can uh, utilize the drawing tools where we go and set the selected object size like so. So while it's still selected, I'm just going to set the object size and I'm just going to change the height to 10 with the link XY enabled. Click apply and that's then going to enlarge that from the center as the anchor point is in the center and it's going to automatically scale both sides for me like so. Now you'll notice if you look in the 3D view that we've sort of lost part of our wine bottle. Now the reason for this, if we go into the modeling tab, we'll see that both of the models that we've imported so far are on the same level which is set to add. So it's going to add from the modeling plane and the modeling plane is this area here which represents our material size. Then we've got our individual models which are currently set to a combined mode, if you can see there, of merge. And this means that they're going to be all blending together. So when we encounter something like this, we can either edit the heights of the object straight away or we can carry on positioning our items where we wish to uh, apply them and then later on we can adjust the heights and the arrangement and order of appearance. I'm just going to go ahead and do this now. So while the barrel top is selected, I'm just going to go over to the spanner icon here which is going to enable me to change the properties of this uh, model. And you'll see once I've selected that, that we do have a vast amount of options that we can use to change the component properties of that model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce that shape height just so that we can help the wine bottle clear the barrel a little. So I'm just going to change this from 0.35 to 0.25. So I'm just going to enter that in there. Then I'm going to press spacebar. That will then re-render that in the 3D view for us. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at maybe changing some of the shape heights with the wine bottle. Now I'm just going to, for a moment, just zoom in on the 3D view just so I can get a closer look at what we are dealing with here. Now what I want to do is sort of work out how tall the barrel is so we know how much the wine bottle needs to clear before it, the wine bottle is fully exposed above the barrel. So if you look down the bottom right hand side here, just about here, you'll see that the, we have a, f a, a Z value and that's what the actual value underneath the arrow is currently for the height of each of the pixels of this barrel. Now you see they're around about 0.1 so what that means is we need to really give this a boost of height so I'm just going to add 0.1 to the base height. There's no point adding it to the shape height as that won't be vis 
uh, visible underneath the barrel itself. So I'm just going to add that and that's then allowed that to clear the barrel by quite some way. But what I want to do is, as the bottle is quite prominent with its detailing, I may just want to soften the shape height a little. So I may just want to reduce that slightly by to maybe a quarter of an inch like so. So it just softens the detail by doing that. And you see that now looks perfect and it's clearing the wine barrel as we wish. So next I'm going to go ahead and add in a wine glass. So I'm just going to close this and go over to my clip art tab. It's going to double click on the wine glass. That's then going to insert that into my modeling tab and the 3D view for us so that we can start editing this model and placing it and rearranging it as we wish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that over to the side around about here and then I'm just going to use this outer corner blue node to rotate it as on to a slight angle. So I'm just going to, whilst holding it, slightly rotate it like so. And you'll notice now that the wine bottle looks rather small compared to our wine glass. So we may need to actually resize our wine bottle. So I'm just going to double click in the 3D view on our wine bottle just to select it. Then I'm going to click it again and that's going to put it into transform mode for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab over any of the corner nodes and I'm going to hold shift down on the keyboard and that will enable us to resize the bottle from its center. So I'll just move it up to around about maybe here, like so. And then I'm going to move it up a tad. So with it selected still and in transform mode, I'm going to hold alt on the keyboard this time. And this is going to enable me to move it either in its own axis, either horizontally or vertically, so it's not going to move out of line. So I'm just going to just move it up towards the top to around about here, like so. I'm just going to let go like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up the wine glass as well. So again, just put it into transform mode. And I don't have to actually keep this one aligned. I can just try and move this up as much as, as I possibly can. Now I may need to resize this wine glass slightly as I just want it to keep level with the uh, bottom of our wine bottle. So I'm just going to grab one of the nodes on the corner. Again, I'm just going to hold shift down just to shrink that down a little. And then with it resized, I'm just going to just move it up a tad, keeping it on the slant. But I want it to sort of match the bottom of our wine bottle. So I may need to just shrink that again. Again, holding shift. Just say about there and that looks perfect. The only problem that we've got here is the fact that again it's been sank into the barrel. So again we can go into the modeling tab with the wine glass selected and go into the component properties and just give that a bit of a boost with the base height like so. Again it's looking quite prominent so we may just want to reduce the actual shape height itself to around about a quarter just to soften that design up a little like so. Now if we click on the wine bottle itself you'll notice that the shape height that we gave it earlier and the base height have now changed. Now the reason for that is because when we go to resize any 3D object in the drawing tab if we just go to the set selected object size we have this option here to auto scale Z. Now as long if that checkbox is checked like it is now. That means any scaling that we do manually in the 3D view to any of the 3D objects, the height of that object is also going to scale along with the X and Y coordinates of the model itself. If it's not checked, however, the height will always maintain the same. So we have to bear this in mind when we're uh, adjusting the heights of things freely in the software. So just to keep that in mind, so I'm just going to go back into the modeling tab and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce that to a quarter inch again and the base height back down to 0.1 like so. And The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mirrored copy of our wine glass over to the other side of our wine bottle. So I'm just going to double click on the wine glass. I'm just going to go over to the drawing tab and then I'm going to go to mirror selected objects. I'm going to make sure flip about job center is selected as all of our models are in the center at the moment, so this is going to work perfect. I want to create a mirrored copy and we're going to flip horizontally. When those options are checked, click that button and you'll notice that we'll have the mirrored version of our wine glass. 
So I'm just going to click close on there and then I'm going to go look back at my project sheet for the next steps that I need to create on our project. So I'm just going to click on that and you'll notice that we've created our barrel top with the wine glasses and the wine bottle. Next we should be looking at adding our engraving plaque to go in front of the barrel but behind the wine glass bottle, grapes and grape leaf. So let's get back to it. So let's go into the Clipart tab and let's add in our engraving plaque. Now for this I'm just going to toggle the windows horizontally so we can see this in both views. And I'm just going to double click that into place like so. Now we can reposition this and resize this however we wish. We can drag either node to uh, bring out the size like so or we can hold shift down to bring it out centrally. And we can even distort the shape by just using one of these centrally nodes uh, in either axis, like so. So I can shorten it, I can lengthen it, like so. So that's not keeping the uh, scale in proportion. And I can also just freely type out any of the dimensions that I wish in the, with the transform shortcuts. So let's say, for instance, that I wanted to create this plaque at a width of 18 inches by 5 inches tall with the transform shortcuts all I would need to do is simply drag on a corner node while it's in this uh, mode like so all I need to do is type in 18 comma 5 for the height enter and that's then going to resize that for me then all I'm going to do is hit F9 on the keyboard and that will then center that in the center of our work area and then we can then align this to the bottom of our barrel now how we're going to do that is we're going to go over to the drawing tab. We're first of all, going to select our plaque, then we're going to shift and select our barrel, and then we're going to go to the alignment options here. And the order does matter here, so we need to make sure that the last item in the selection is the object that we want to align to. And then we're just going to align the bottom of our plaque to the bottom of our selection. So we're going to use this option here, the inside edge. And you'll notice that that's now brought that down for us. So with that done, I'm just going to close this form. You'll notice that now we have more problems again. So with the ordering, so if we just zoom in a little, you'll see that the bottom of our wine glasses are now hidden behind this plaque. Now that isn't the idea that we have if we just refer back to our project sheet. That actually appears in front of our plaque. So we've got to rearrange the order and our or, and change some of the component properties again. Now you'll notice also in the 2D view that the wine bottle is hidden behind the barrel top. Now that's due to the order that we actually imported these pieces of clip art in, but it has no ordering reference to the 3D view. Now if you want to just for organization, we want to retain the view so it looks exactly the same or we're working with the components together and the grayscales in the 2D view properly, then we can just right click on a selected item, so I'll just deselect as they were both selected. I'm just going to double click to select the barrel, I'm just going to right click that, and then I'm going to move this to back, and that will then place that behind all of the other objects in the 2D view. So let's zoom into the 3D view as we want to just start arranging these so that the wine glass and the wine bottle appear in front of the plaque. So let's go back over to the modeling tab, and we're going to apply some different techniques this time. So we're just going to select the wine bottle, like so. And then we're going to access the component properties from the transform nodes itself. So the very bottom biggest dark blue node here, if you click on that, that will bring up a smaller version of the component properties. Now what this allow, allow us to do is it allows us to use the tilt and fade options within the 3D view. So what we're going to do this time, instead of altering the heights, is we're going to alter the fade and tilt options. So we're going to add a tilt. Now how this works, if I just press the set button, we'll get an anchor point. So we're allowed to set two anchors. The first one is the point of where we want to actually hinge the tilt from. So this is the part that's not going to, that's going to change the least. So I'm just going to check there. And then I want to raise the bottom part up. That's why I'm going to select it. The second anchor point to be underneath, like so. And then I can set the angle of increment. So all I need to do is just move the slider up like so to around about three, like so. And you'll see that's now pushed that right above 
uh, the plaque. So I can actually just minimize that if I feel that I can get away with using less, like so. And we can just tilt that around to see how that looks. Yep, that looks fine. Now, whilst we're also in the form for the wine bottle, you may notice that at the top we are having a problem with the fact that the top of the wine bottle is not merging out from uh, above the rim of the barrel. So what we can do here is we can add a slight amount of base height to just push that above. So let's try 0 0.2, 0 0.3. just want to try and use as m little amount as possible. So there looks perfect. So I'm just going to add another base height of 0.5 to that object like so. Now what I want to do uh, is do the same thing with the tilt for the wine glasses. Now, rather than edit them both, I'm going to actually just delete one of the copies that I made and I'm going to edit just the one and then I'm going to create another copy over to the side. It's always best to work with just one and then copy over rather than working with two different uh, models and trying to apply the same technique as the tilt may actually be different depending on where you click. It's never going to be exact uh, both time around. So again with it selected I'm just going to add a tilt I'm going to press set and do it from the top of the glass to the around about the bottom like so and I'm just going to add about three degrees. Now we can actually if we want to just type that in there like so. Now that doesn't seem to be enough to push that out so again I may need to actually use a little bit more of a base height so just type in 0.5 there and you see that's now pushed that clear of the plaque like so. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to create that copy again so I'm just going to go into the drawing tab with it selected and the options will remain as I last use them so these should still be checked the flip about job center and the create mirrored copy and I'm just going to click that button to create me the horizontal mirrored version like so. And then I'm just going to go back into the modeling tab. So let's take another quick look at our arrangement so we're doing well so far so now I just need to import the grapes and the grape leaf and just try and remember that their shapes and the way they're organized here. And I'm just going to create the left hand side and I'm going to mirror again over to the right hand side. So let's go to the clip art tab and we're going to import our grapes. So just double click on those and then we just drag them over and you see that gray scale there and what we want to do is just sort of position them following the curve of the plaque with the uh, curves and the shape of the grapes. So roughly to around about there. And we want these to appear as if they are coming from behind the plaque, so which they are at the moment. Then what I want to do is I want to create another copy, so I can either import another copy of the grapes, but what I'm actually going to do with the grapes still selected is I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and just drag me a copy in line with that previous version. And then I'm going to hold the Control key down before, and then I'm going to let go of the left mouse button while still holding those two keys and that's then going to create me my copy like so. And then what I can do to flip it uh, horizontally is simply use the, sh the keyboard shortcut of the letter H. So if I just t press that on the keyboard you'll notice that has now flipped that automatically for us around its own center. So if I just zoom in a little I'm just going to start maneuvering these grapes. So I don't want them to be merging through into the barrel so I'm just going to move them over to the right a little, like so, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate them using the lower right hand blue node, like so, so just rotate them over and then just move them up a little, like so. And what I can do here, as I don't want these two ends to start crossing over, I want them to actually look naturally like one's sitting on top of the other, I can actually just apply a tilt or a fade to that, so with the grapes selected. I'm going to actually use the component properties available within the 3D form and just going to select tilt, select the set, and I'm going to hinge from this side over to this side and it's going to specify a very minute amount and we can literally just jog this around like so. So that's now giving me the impression that one is sat on top of the other. That's perfect. I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard just to zoom out a little bit. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in our last model, which is uh, the grape leaf. So we can literally just drag this one into position roughly, like so. And that looks perfect. It's filled the gap in between the grapes and it's sitting on the corner over the two. So what I'm going to do now is just scroll over a little bit and just downsize this slightly. Like so, and then what I'm going to do is I'm then going to edit the component properties of this so it's sat clear above the grapes and the plaque as well. So let's just go back into the component properties, and I'm just going to add in uh, a base height here. So I'm just going to look with a side view. I'm just going to add 0.1. Basically, we just want to add as much or little as we can to get away with the view that we're actually after. So let's just take a look. That looks quite good and then obviously we can just reduce the shape height to make the leaf not so intense like so now by doing that that's obviously sank that back into the plaque so we just need to mess around with the base height again like so and we are still sunk a little bit underneath the plaque as you can see by the green shaded area uh, just around the leaf that just that means to us that there's still a little bit that sank underneath the plank so if we if we want to we can still keep raising this up slightly till we get something that looks like that so it looks like it's completely above the plaque so I'm happy with that that's fine I'm just going to zoom out and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the grapes and the grape leaf so I'm just going to select the grapes, shift and select the grape leaf and go to drawing and then we're going to mirror those selected objects again so I'm just going to flip those horizontal like so and I can just close that. So the last thing that we're going to actually do is add some text onto our plaque. Now it may be a good idea just to uh, get the items or the grayscales in the 2D view in the right order so I'm just going to deselect. I'm just going to select this grape here and just send that to the back as that's not over the front of the plaque as you can see in the 3D view. Like so. It's going to bring these to the front. Just so that when we actually place the text on our plaque, we know whereabouts where we can and can't actually place it on the plaque itself. So once we've done that, we can then go ahead and enter the draw text tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in the word vintages, like so. I'm going to choose a true type font. And I'm just going to load up all the system fonts. And I'm actually going to use the font called Lucida Bright. Now you can just start typing that with that drop down open. And as long as it's installed on your system, we'll be able to select it, like so. I'm going to make that text bold. And we're going to give it a height of 2 inches. And I'm just going to place that alignment in the center and then click apply like so and then with it selected in the 2D view we can select it just put it into transform mode and then holding alt I'm just going to drag that down so it still remains in the center and I'm just going to position it just below the tops of the wine bottle and, uh, and wine glasses and the bottom of the plaque itself so roughly around here like so now for this part we can actually work solely in the 2D view so I'm just going to maximize that and just hit F on the keyboard just to zoom that back in and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, change the text spacing itself so to do that with the text selected we just simply use this option here to edit text spacing and curve and that will then when we go into the 2D view allow us to change the spacing between the letters and also the curvature if you wish by using these node uh, green nose here. Now I just want to change the spacing so all I do to reduce the space I just click in between with my mouse like so and if I want to add space in between characters I hold the shift key down and I then add space in between my characters like so. When we're actually happy with the spacing that we have all we need to do then is just simply use the option here to go back into the normal selection mode like so and then what I want to do is change the size of individual letters now rather than go and creating different text objects what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break 
this text object and I'm just going to convert it into curves. Now how I do that is if I can actually right click and convert to curves with that option there or I can use the option on the 2D drawing tools which is this option here to convert to curves. What that's going to do is it's going to convert all those vectors from a text object into single vectors. So I can manipulate these just like any vectors that we would create with the tools here. So with it selected I'm just going to put it into transform mode by selecting it once again and then what I'm going to do with the top left node is I'm just going to drag up and just going to stretch that out to around about here like so. And I'm going to do the same to the S and if I just get the height of this letter so I can see that here that this is 2.62 in height what I can do is I can simply just resize this one to the same height as well and now I can do this by using the transform shortcut so I'm just going to type 0 as I want it to scale the width for me I'm just going to put comma and I'm just going to put 2.62 and then enter and that's going to resize that to virtually the same size as the V for us, like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my work ready for the Toolpathing Companion video. So I'm just going to go File, Save, and I'm just going to navigate my way through the Tutorials folder. And I'm just going to rename this to CNC underscore mini project. Three D underscore assembly, like so, and then just hit the enter key, and that's going to save that for us. So, please join us again for the companion video. I will link that in the related video section of the tutorial browser. And if you want to find out any more information of the Design and Make projects, please just go to the website, which is www designermate.com and there is a help section full of getting started videos and free projects there as well. Thank you very much for watching.